Welcome to Mortgage Talk 101 here on Super Talk 1270. Time to look behind the numbers. Buying, selling, refinancing, Mortgage Talk 101 addresses real issues in real estate. Now, live from the Super Talk 1270 studios, here's Mortgage Talk 101 host, Joe Sheehan. Good morning, Bismarck Mandan. It's a sunny day in Mortgageville. Uh, Dave Floor filling in uh, at the stainless steel microphone for Mr. Sheehan, who's uh, off, off vacationing, I believe, today, Jim. Okay. Okay, we got Jim Walsh on the board over here. You shaved. Yeah, your uh, your beautiful beard is what gone. Did, what did you call me when I walked a in? A barefaced scoundrel. Barefaced scoundrel. Thank you very much yes. for that. Yeah, I'll uh, let my daughter know so she can call <laughs> okay. me that the rest of the rest of the week here. Anyway, yeah, no, I just, I'd go for the clean look here. See yeah. what happens. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, your your face matches your head. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Don't take that the wrong way, by no. the way. I mean, it's a great head of It's It's all skin. kind of round and bumpy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay, all right. Well, you know, I, I couldn't compete with your your uh, your beard there, so I oh, thank you. I'm going to shave you. it off. Well, I've got the little uh, can call it a goatee. Yeah, Van Dyke. It's a, a Van, Van Dyke. Dyke. I have a Van, a Van Dyke. Dyke. Dick Van Dyke. Yes, or Jerry. Which who would you, you like better, Dick or Jerry? Uh, well, everybody uh, everybody prefers Dick. Although Jerry did have one really good role, the coach. Coach. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he was absolutely awesome. On he that. was awesome. Yeah. I mean, nobody really thought he had it in him. I mean, yeah. Jerry Van Dyke for years was notorious. I mean, he was a he was a brunt of jokes. He was a punchline. Yeah, yeah. You know, blah, blah, blah. How funny was he? He was as unfunny as Jerry Van, Van Dyke. Dyke. <laughs> and then he did coach and surprised everybody. Yeah, he was awesome in that yeah. role. So, yeah, so I guess you could say Dick Van Dyke had a little more. He had more of a career than his. Oh, yeah. Jerry did. Da, 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 da. At least until da, da, he fell da, over the ottoman. Da, 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 yeah. da. There we go. Okay. All right. Well, folks, let's talk about mortgage rates. How about that instead yeah. of talking about the Van Dyke family? All right. Uh, let's see, folks. Uh, mortgage rates. Uh, the Freddie Mac uh, weekly survey, the 30-year fixed rate mortgage, averaged 4.19%. Uh, that was down from last week when it averaged 42 So it went down a whole one basis point, Jim. Ooh. Um, now, if you looked at this, and again, this is going back for the week uh, to last week, so it's an average of the last week. If you look at it f- today, tomorrow, we might uh, be seeing a little more of a drop there. Um, depends. Uh, what happens tomorrow with the jobs number comes out, The how many jobs were created in the last month. Um, the 15-year f- fixed-rate mortgage averaged 3.36%. Uh, that was down... Uh, it's unchanged from last week, actually, and it was uh, 3.29% uh, a year ago, so actually up about 10 basis points from uh, from a year ago. Um, so mortgage rates, again, pretty good. Um, looking at uh, some stuff to look for uh, today and tomorrow, uh, our friend Barry Habib from MBS Highway, uh, he is recommending that uh, you look at locking your interest rate ahead of tomorrow's uh, jobs report. Um, the jobs report comes out tomorrow. They're expecting 215,000 new jobs and a 6.1% unemployment rate, which is unemployment rate they're expecting the same as last month. Uh, the numbers going into the jobs report tomorrow were pretty strong this week. The number of job, jobless claims were down from the month previous. Uh, it was a good claims figure, as they say in the industry. Um, and last month, the number of jobs created was a uh, was surprisingly low and a, a big miss at 142,000 cases. So they're expecting over 200,000 jobs this month, um, and they probably are looking at that last month's number to get revised upwards. Um, so that's going to depend upon what happens with the stock market and bonds. Um, but if that number comes in as a strong uh, jobs number, you can probably expect the interest rates to go up and yeah. the stock market to bounce off where the stock market's really gone down the last couple of days here. Uh, you could probably expect the stock market to bounce back off their, their lows. Um, they've got, there's some resistance as they call it out there. And the stock market broke through that resistance yesterday, I believe. And, right. but they expect that a lot of times it just it, right now that if we have a good jobs number and stuff, it looks like the economy is still doing okay that uh, we'd have that bounce back the other way. Uh, so tomorrow. interest so rates are going up? They could. If we get a good okay. jobs number, if it looks like the economy's created a lot of jobs last month, then right. you could expect interest rates to go up. And that's why uh, the MBS Highway, Barry Habib, they're advising that we 
that if you're today, if you're sitting there debating whether you should lock your interest rate in, it's probably mm. a good idea to lock it in. Okay. Um, you're not going to get hurt that much, but they're expecting a good jobs number, which would increase the interest rates. So Bingo. the idea is to lock today. Um, no, speaking of uh, interest rates and unemployment numbers, uh, there was an article here this last week. Uh, it was on CNBC, and uh, uh, a gentleman named Kyle Bass, who's uh, I think he's like a hedge fund guy, uh, Heyman Capital Management. Yeah. Uh, he's the founder of this. And he's saying that you really look at, uh, you know, the unemployment. I mean, this is something uh, Joe and I have talked about, uh, what the real unemployment rate is. You know, he's looking at it as if you looked at it with the people that aren't looking for jobs, they've dropped out of the workforce. The un- unemployment number would actually be around 11% is what Mr. Bass says. And um, he's saying that the because of that and that's one factor. And then another factor with interest rates is that the government, you know, we can't really, we don't want to see the, the rates go up as the government. So he doesn't think the Fed's going to be raising their Fed funds rate anytime soon. Uh, because if they start raising that and, and normal rates would come back, uh, it would cost to pay off all this debt that we have. It would it would raise, potentially raise us for, and what does he say here? With every 100 basis points increase in rates, it would cost us fis- fiscally about $150 billion in interest. So he said there's a real push to keep rates low uh, until you start paying down some of this debt, I guess. Um, so that kind of flies in the, what, along with what we've been hearing uh, or talking about here with Bill Bodner, our friend at uh, Mortgage Market Guide, who's claimed rates so are going to stay right around this same area till 2020. So this would kind of somebody else kind of agreeing with with uh, Mr. Bodner. I think that that's kind of where rates are going to be. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. A couple other things uh, before we take a break here on our first segment. Uh, our friend Elliot Eisenberg's always got fun stuff to talk about. Um, Graphsandlaughs.net, dot uh, net. Elliot, PhD in economics. Um, Jim, how many how many garments a year do you think you buy clothes? How many garments? Yeah. Uh, a couple of times a year, I replenish some of my socks and underwear, and I usually buy a couple of pairs of jeans. Okay. I'm pretty well covered for the fancy so, stuff, so you, like I've so, got a couple of nice suits. Mm. Yeah, so you, you basically are garments, you're, you're probably buying a couple of pairs of pants. I say roughly around this time of year, I'll probably get, well, like around Christmas, I'll get might, uh, some yeah, pants okay. and uh, well, shirts. Here's well, what, here's what happened. In yeah. 1991, the average American bought 40, gar- 40 garments a year. Now, is that including socks and undies? I don't and, it, He doesn't hmm. say here. Then imports then began flooding the market. Prices fell and number of garments purchased per year steadily rose, peaking right. at 69 in 2005, with an average spending person re- spending per person reaching $860. So, Jim, you're spending you know, a couple pairs of jeans, you're spending, what, $75? 100 well, maybe? Well, we— Depends we, on how uh, good a jean you buy. Well, we go to the uh, you know one of the local discount places. Yeah, the, okay. So you're you're maybe paying fifty. Yeah, maybe okay. at max. Right on clothing, probably for the year. Right. Yeah, I'm kind of with you there. I you know I got to buy a little fancier yeah. shirt than you do, and and that. But I'm not I'm not spending anywhere near eight hundred and sixty dollars. Um, imports now account for ninety seven point five percent of all garment sales, and prices are again rising. In two thousand thirteen, garment purchase totaled sixty four per person, and but spending increased to nine hundred and seven dollars. Now Elliot is bringing down the average, and you are bringing the average way down. You're oh, like an outlier. Sorry. You're an outlier. I, they don't even I, count you. I don't think. Don't hold it against me. No, it's a good thing. Oh, okay, I think. good. Yeah, you're. Well, see, my wife likes to go. Prudent. My wife likes to get our stuff at the uh, what do you call the stores? Like the Goodwill Industry type stores. Yeah, sure. Around, uh, oh, okay. Seeds of Hope, those stores. Okay, sure. And it's not because we're paupers or anything. We just like uh, we like supporting the cause, exactly. and we like uh, you know she likes getting Super. closer. Super. I yeah. mean, I wear jeans here. I mean, this is a very casual atmosphere yeah. here. Yeah. So you know, you can get a decent pair of used jeans for a couple of bucks oh, sometimes. You're doing good. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. So we're both bringing down the average here. But, you know, that, that all enters into the cost of living. Yeah. Uh, and that. Now, now, underwear, I insist on buying new. I will not wear somebody else's dirty underwear. I will not wear somebody else's underwear, no matter how many times it's been washed. And socks, because yeah, and socks. I don't need somebody else's toe stuff. This is true. Yeah, okay. Our own radio station, not Fargo, not the Twin Cities, proud to be Bismarck and Mandan's own Super Talk 1270. 
That's right. Yeah, you kind of get the, the feeling that their school experience was not the most positive. No, they, they weren't. Happy I guess with the it. weekend at the college didn't turn out like so they planned. planned. There you a go. Different oh, song, but good. anyway. Okay. Yeah. Well, it all works together. You know, of course. Donald Fagan's. It all there. dovetails. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, actually, what happened was they got kicked out of college for uh, selling dope. True story. Oh, really? Becker and Fagan, they were uh, dealing uh, the uh, you know yeah. wacky tobacco, uh-huh. and they got caught, and uh, they became ex students. Kind of worked out for them, didn't it? I I, I would say so. Yeah, yeah. they were, they're they're kind. But they're think successful. of how well off they'd be if only they had their degree. Yeah, I don't yeah. I don't know if you could say they'd be better off. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I think they did pretty good. They say that about Bill Gates, and people look at you funny. Yeah, Bill. Yeah, Bill yeah, he Gates dropped out of Harvard. He dropped out of Harvard to he go start dropped out Microsoft. Of Harvard. Yeah, but think Paul how much Allen. better off he'd be if he'd stayed and graduated. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Did Paul Allen, his partner, did any of those guys jobs and some Wozinski, of them did? I don't think guys? Jobs finished school. Wozinski? I think he dropped out too. But the thing is, the thing is though, these guys were all like Harvard and Yale men. Yeah, it, I mean, they it's were not smart like they to were. Begin with. It's not they like they were there. going to the uh, you know East Hamroyd Community College yeah. somewhere. I mean, these yeah. guys had some chops to begin with. Yeah. You yeah. know, dropping out of Harvard is a little better than, you know, dropping yeah. out of. They had an idea and they ran with it. Yeah, there you go. School. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, hey, Dave Floor, uh, st- st- saddling up the stainless steel microphone for Joe this morning. Uh, Joe's vacationing. Um, so we're here on Mortgage Talk 101. Uh and we're th- we're gonna let's just, let's talk about numbers behind the numbers as we say in our intro, right, Jim? Yep. Uh, it's baseball. Baseball season started. This does nothing to do with mortgages other than what it would cost you to go to a baseball game, which would mean that's money you can't spend on buying a house Not much time or I'm renting. Baseball this year. Okay. No, but uh, this is from uh, Elliot Eisenberg. Also, um, who do, which team do you think has the highest payroll at two hundred and thirty nine million? I don't know the Yankees, the Dodgers, the Dodgers, the Dodgers. Okay. They made the playoffs, yeah, and they won ninety four games. So they spent two point five million per win. Okay, okay, that's just on the payroll, just yeah. for the players. Okay, um, Oakland, they made the playoffs also, even though they lost their first yeah. their playoff game. Uh, they they had a payroll of seventy nine million. They won eighty eight games, so they only spent eight hundred fifty thousand dollars per win. Oakland usually has issues going into the playoffs. They, yeah, they, uh, they haven't been successful. Yeah, very good team in the pr- regular season, but hasn't worked. Yeah, out. well, you know they do that whole saber metric and that ultra yeah, mathematical yeah. Moneyball. You saw the movie Moneyball. Moneyball, yeah. Yeah. great Billy movie. Bean. Yeah, cool movie with Brad Pitt as, as Billy, Billy Bean. Bean. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Pittsburgh, they, they lost also. They had 88 wins and they had a payroll of 78, so they only spent 860 thousand per win. So yeah. the two teams that spent the least lost lost out. Okay. okay. And then Kansas City, which I I, I like, I'm I'm glad Kansas City won it. Somebody different. They hadn't been in there since 1985. Yeah. Uh, they they uh they had a cost of one million dollars per win based on their payroll. So. Yeah. At least one of the lower teams got in. That's good to see. Mm-hmm. Versus, you know, they're, I think they're now, Do you have all the teams goal. there? No. Okay, I'd be I curious to see how the Phillies are like, doing. My two favorite teams are the Phillies and the Baltimore Orioles. Yeah, well, Orioles made the playoffs. Phillies yes, did they not. did. Yeah. The Orioles, they, they, got a, they got a good shot. Yeah. They got a good shot to get to the series. Baltimore's a great town. Yeah. They got a great stadium there, too. Ooh, they, were, they were they were one of the first teams to Camden do that Yard. whole retro thing yeah. with the stadium. Camden Yard, yeah. A Camden great place. Yeah. So, anyway, baseball's kicking off, so... Hope everybody enjoys that. Um, okay, some other uh, by the numbers from our buddy Michael Higley. Uh, let's see, Jim. What uh, what is going on? Um, oh, did you know? End of life. Twenty eight percent of <laughs> Medicare expenditures are generated by Americans in the final six months of their lives. Eighty percent of deaths in the United States are Medicare beneficiaries. Well, that makes and that makes sense. You spend a because lot. that's when you're getting all the all the real deep, medical care. You know, care. that's when yeah. things start getting a little intense. Is right there near yeah. the end of the run. Yeah, as you're grabbing for the every every extra minute you can. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, um, okay. Uh, Frick and frack. Twenty percent of the world's natural gas is produced in the United States. That's we are the largest producer of natural gas on the planet. Okay. There's a joke there that's somewhere. Right. I think there might be. <laughs> Something about beans or beans, Tex-Mex we food. Shoot more, we uh, eat more beans than we should. I don't uh, know. Yeah. I don't know. That's not, this is, or it's the cows. It's those flatulent yeah. cows putting all the methane in there. There, it's the cows. That's what it is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, what else we got here? Final answer. Oh, 
President Obama announced, well, this, this is going to violate Joe's uh, no, no uh, Affordable <laughs> no Obama Care zone. Act talk. No Obama zone. No Obama zone and yeah. no talking about Affordable Care Act, but he's not here. So I don't know if we're technically violating Joe's not here. He's not here. Neither Joe's is the president. Here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the president announced on, on uh, April 17th of this year that 8 million Americans had signed up for health insurance coverage right. between October 13th and April of 2014 as a result of the Affordable Care Act. That number was revised to 7.3 million enrolled Americans as of September 18th. Hmm. The $700,000 reduction is a function of individuals losing coverage because they failed to pay their monthly health insurance <laughs> premiums and individuals securing new jobs that offered employer-provided health insurance. So whatever that means in the big scheme of things, I'm not sure. So it sounds to me like things really haven't changed that much. Yeah, I'm not, I don't. The people who I'm can't sure. afford health care still can't afford the health care. Yeah, it, well, that's kind of what it's saying, right? Yeah. They couldn't afford the premium, so mm-hmm. they, they, they're not signed up anymore. Okay, uh, disconnect. Um, no, we had a recession uh, in the United States yeah. in 2008. Uh, it officially ended five and a quarter years ago on June 30th, 2009. Did you know that? I did not know that. Okay. The disconnect is that 75% of five, 79% of 500 business owners that were surveyed in August believe the USA remains in a recession. So business owners, I assume some of these would be considered small business owners, think it's still a recession out there because they're not Self-fulfilling able to sell prophecy. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you think it's a recession, you act like it's a recession, you it's going to be a recession. You yeah. don't hire people, you don't try and expand your business, yeah. et cetera. Yeah, so that, that, there's a little hurdle to get over uh, right. probably in the mindset of people. But, you know, so is the recession truly ended or not? I don't know. I uh-huh. guess by statistic wise. Well, I, I think guess. it ended here. Certainly, well, it's done here. Yeah, yeah. there's no recession here. Um, Mexico versus China. Um, through the first seven months of 2014, U.S. exporters sold 139 billion dollars of goods and services to Mexico. That's double the 68 billion that we exported to China. Yeah, that's interesting. I well, guess Mexico is supposed to be one of our big trading partners, yeah, they're right? Closer. I guess they're closer. I guess yeah. it's easier. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. People. Okay. Well, these are people that can afford to buy a house. Um, 100 professional male golfers and seven professional female golfers have made at least $1 million in tournament prize money during the 2014 season. Okay. The men's 2014 season is over. So only a hundred of them made a million dollars. Oh, Boom. Okay, but the women's golf season has eight events remaining, so there's still a chance for some ladies to make over a million dollars. Yeah, don't expect them on the, tin, on, on the street corner with a tin cup full of pencils anytime soon. You know, I play golf, and I'm happy I win five. I put in my five bucks in our game right. when I play, and I'm happy to just walk out with five bucks. And well, you know, I shoot in the low 80s. Back. You do you? How, if, if it gets any warmer, I don't play. You don't play. Sure. Ah. There you go. All right. I'm kind of with you on that. Good though. night, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, I don't. I'm not in that category. I I'm happy if I make my five bucks back. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Because if I make more than the five bucks back, yeah. then I probably have to buy the round of beer. Yeah. For, if I win the most for the, the day, old nineteenth hole. You, yeah. You kind of you're expected to pay for the extra, so not a mm-hmm. good deal. Um, well, what else are we going to talk about today? We're not talking a whole lot about mortgages and interest rates, but yeah, you know, we're having fun, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Well, we'll get back to it. We're going to talk about uh, drones. And the use of drones in uh, selling real estate that might be interesting uh, and you found a you found a very interesting article about on, a drone uh, about somebody shooting down a drone somebody shooting down a drone yeah and of course a lot of people weighed in on the use of uh, drones in this article we're going to talk about and then we'll, we'll we'll find some other mortgage stuff to talk about so let's see what's our oh dirty work that's what we got well that would be the uh, oil field jobs that's a little dirty work that was uh, Katie Lied, right? The album? This is from Katie Lied, yeah. I think so. Good tune. Yeah. All right, folks, we'll be back on Mortgage Talk 101. Right now, it's 46. Get the traffic and weather information you need anytime on Super Talk 1270 and online at supertalk1270.com. All right. Let's do it again, Jim. Go back, back, Jack. Do it again. Go back, Jack. We'll do it again. Uh, yeah. We are back from break. And we're going to do it again. Yeah. All right. Uh, Mortgage Talk 101. Dave Floor here saddling up the stainless steel microphone. Joe's vacationing. Jim Walsh on the board. And uh, it's a nice day out there. 
a beautiful day. It's, it's now it's supposed one. to. Now, like he was just saying, it's supposed to rain later on today, and it's or showers to, maybe. And it's maybe. supposed to get cold. Yeah. tomorrow, I think. Right? Yeah. Okay. In the thirties tonight. It was yeah. in the thirties this morning when I got in here around five o'clock yeah. this morning. Yeah. It was about thirty-nine. And they're talking. Uh, well, Vikings play the Packers tonight. Yep. And we still don't know who the quarterback is. going to We don't be. know if Teddy's going to play, but we do know that it's supposedly going to rain. There and they're actually thinking there might be bad thunderstorms where the rain, oh, game would man. get delayed. Oh, yeah, the game would get delayed until yeah. the thunderstorms pass. So that'll be interesting. See, I think they should do that with baseball too. They should play baseball in all kinds of weather. Uh, all the sports <laughs> just play it all in weather. I mean, what is this uh, canceling baseball because it's raining? Yeah, I don't what know. It, it would be harder to play baseball in the rain than yeah, I suppose than football. But, yeah, a lot more sliding going on, yeah, probably. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah, It would get a little sloppy out there. But, right? I mean, football, they play in anything. You know, yeah. a tornado, you know, passes through okay. the sta- stadium. They right. play through that. Okay. Well, if, folks, if you have a question for us, uh, 663-1270, uh, feel free to call in. And, actually, it would be great if a realtor is listening to if, chime in on this next topic we, we've got here. Uh, drones. Jim, you know what? Drones. Amazon. Yeah. Amazon wants to send us our packages with drones. Right. Right? And you, you you order from Amazon, and they'd fly it into you right to your front door. Have you yeah. ever, did you ever see that? I think it was on 60 Minutes the first time I saw it. And they, yeah. They just flew, flew it right up the door and dropped it off and left. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, the uh, realtors are looking at uh, using drones to sell real estate, to show properties. And it sounds like a good a good idea, especially like in rural areas. You would you're, think, you, yeah. You, you, you're trying to sell a farm, for instance, yeah. and you know what a great perspective to get on this uh, farm. Uh, you know the, the house and the land and everything is to fly a drone over the property, right? That you could show rather than having to drive out. You know, you're showing somebody they fly into Bismarck. You know, then you drive them out to this, like putting a little cam uh, quarter thing on it and flying it around yeah, so people just, can see the yeah, uh, get a they, aerial they, view. They could see this place from there you know, wherever they're from. Right. And just, okay, yeah, I'm interested. Now yeah. I want to physically go out and look at that place. You know, it's, it sounds like a great idea. Now, in, in a town like Bismarck Mandan, yeah, might be a little bit harder because of trees. You know, you'd have to, I don't know if it would work in a in a, in a a town area necessarily. I don't know. Oh, but out rural areas in the, yeah. in around town, it would probably work great. Well, the FAA is telling, has a rule in place that says... You cannot use drones for commercial purposes, okay? And they consider using it for a real estate showing as a commercial purpose. So they, oh. they basically put a ban on it. Well, that sucks. Um, and the National Association of Realtors has said, you know, please, members, don't use a drone, you know, because you're violating the FAA, FAA rules. Now, they're against the rule. They're, they're trying to get the FAA to lift the ban on the use of drones. Yeah, I would think they could make some accommodation yeah. for people there. And you know, what's interesting, this is an article on the realtormag.com uh, where they were talking about this. And, you know, they said uh, th- there was a lot of, there was quite a few comments about, about this. And, and, you know, some of the realtors said, well, you know, I'm going to be careful. Number one, I have the owner's permission to f- video the house from the air, so right. I got the permission of the homeowner. So privacy issue is not an issue because you know you have Google driving down the street in town taking video of everybody's yeah. house. You can Google your house now. Yeah. So and you've got Google Earth and you can zero down on your house and all this stuff. Okay. So they're saying so you know we have the owner's permission to show the house. Yeah. That way, and then they're saying also you know as far as the FAA of course is concerned about safety. You know, you're well. You're you're up in the air, and a plane flies through, and it hits the drone. You know, you could have an accident, boom, right. and you know, and you've got this drone that might fall out of the sky onto somebody's head. I suppose you know, all this stuff. Okay. Well, there's stuff up there. I mean, there's high wires, yeah. and radio towers. Yeah, yeah. And you know, so there there is some potential there. No, obviously, somebody that pays enough to have a drone is probably going to be pretty careful about where they fly it. Yeah, I'm waiting for the day that this radio station gets knocked off the air because somebody hits it with a drone. Hit the tower. Hits yeah, but, the tower with a drone. Yeah, but <laughs> somebody's, you know, somebody that owns a drone and is using it for their business purpose, they're probably right. going to be pretty careful about where they're flying it. We would hope. Because they don't want to have to replace it. Okay. We would hope. And the other point uh, one, of the, one of the commenters made about this article was that, you know, you have kids out there flying, you know, model airplanes around. Right. And they, they, there's no ban on them because right. it's recreation. Well, it's, how it's high can they, they go realistically? And how high can they go? But, you know, there's as much risk of a kid 
flying a plane around in their backyard and running it into their neighbor's house. Or, or kids with a rocket shooting a rocket. Or, truck. Yeah, or, and hitting a neighbor, you know, their neighbor in the head or something. Yeah. You know, there's more risk of that probably from the kid using it for recreational purposes, which is okay with the FAA, mm-hmm. than from somebody using a drone to show a real estate property. Right. So it, it, interesting topic, I think. Um, now, you found this article. This is from New Jersey. Tell us about this. From South Jersey. Let drones. me borrow it back here. I've is, got a, well, I've got a copy of my own. Copy of I have to borrow okay. yours. You don't have to borrow mine. Uh, from Atlantic City, New Jersey. Uh, actually, this was suburban Atlantic City. Yeah. A man is arrested after allegedly shooting down a drone with a shotgun. This happened on Tuesday. Oh, man. Uh, charged with a possession. Now, bear in mind, New Jersey, you know, this. we're talking the civilized east here. We're not talking North Dakota, which yeah. is gun culture. Yeah. And on the east coast, especially around the bigger metro areas, uh, they're not too big on people walking around flashing firearms. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just a different culture. Yeah, right. Anyway, this fellow was charged with possession of a weapon for unlawful purpose and criminal mischief. Mm-hmm. Uh, what happened was the police responded on Friday after the drone owner, the droner, the reported drone. his drone had been shot down. He told uh, the police he had been taking aerial photographs of his friend's home, which is under construction. He heard gunshots <laughs> and lost control of the drone. Uh, yeah, put two and two together yeah. there. He found the drone, and it was full of bullet holes. Okay. So the man directed police toward the area where the shots came from, and there was the guy, and they arrested yeah. him. He had a shotgun. He was shooting at the... Uh, so I, with a I, shotgun. I'm assuming this was not his friend that shot it down, because he, he said he was taking aerial photographs of not his house but his friend's home, which yes, was under construction. Home. Yeah. So this guy, you know, he must not have lived in the neighborhood, maybe. Uh, yeah, it, it doesn't make that clear in the article. Here. Yeah, we don't. So we don't know exactly everything that happened, but yeah, you know, so this guy obviously was a little upset that you know there was this drone flying around his neighborhood, probably. And, you know, he didn't have permission. No. Uh, to do, you know, I well, he probably had permission from his friend to show the play. Well, maybe in New Jersey, play. maybe the local police, they have provisions for that kind do you, of thing. Do you think uh, this gentleman, well, he's named in the article, so we can use his name, Yeah, right? okay. Russell yeah. Percenti. Russell Percenti, age 32. Uh, do you think anything on, maybe he was doing something unlawful that he didn't want videoed? That's quite possible. That didn't occur to me, but yeah. You know, why? That you know, could be. He didn't want people looking at whatever he was doing. Why, you know, I don't know. Why maybe he was he, growing something in his backyard that he shouldn't have been growing. Yeah, you know? maybe, you know, I don't know. I guess if I had the drone flying around, I'd probably call the police first rather than yeah. pull out my shotgun. And, well, I'd call the police and say, why is this thing buzzing around my neighborhood here? Yeah. Yeah, is this, is this you guys, number one, the police? Yeah, right. <laughs> right, yeah. So anyway, but anyway, you know, getting back to the real estate, I, I think it's kind of a cool idea because... Well, the drone thing. The drone thing yeah. for real estate because I can see... Where in a in a rural setting where it could be pretty useful to show, you know, a little more dramatic view of a, of yeah. a property, you know, if it's by the water somewhere, for instance. I mean, how cool is that? You could yeah, you, go out and look at the water. Show. Yeah, um, get the drone to fly out over the yeah. water, and you see if you get in your boat. Uh, if you yeah, can't afford your, a boat or you don't want to go out in the boat, yeah, you just send the drone out. Well, yeah, you know, you're trying to woo. somebody's trying to see. Okay, I'm next to the water. What's out there? Well, you could fly the drone. Yeah. Down, you know, well, here's, you know, here's a nice beach area or whatever and, you know, place yeah. to go hunting and, and I don't know, from a and, practical matter, I think it's more a case of the sizzle here selling the steak. It you could know? be, yeah. You know? But I think it, it, you know, I think it could be something that's useful for sure. Some, especially if you have people moving from out of state yeah, that don't really have a perspective of what it's like here maybe necessarily. Yeah, they get out here. I mean, the first view I had of North Dakota was from an airplane. Yeah, yeah. And it was pretty spectacular. Yeah. Well, it looks re- like Texas. Yeah. North Dakota it looks a lot like Texas yeah. from uh, yeah. 30,000 feet up. No, I remember somebody telling me their first experience in North Dakota. Uh, they, oh, no, they were they were sitting next to a person who was, was their first time in North Dakota. Yeah. They were coming here, and they came, and it was basically a blizzard. <laughs> so that was our first experience was looking out the window and not being able to see anything see the guys who hired me did it right they brought me out in mid-may yeah they waited smart. until may to hire me smart people and yeah. so let's bring him out as soon as the yeah. cold ends we'll bring him out here yeah. Yeah. but i think that would be i think that would be pretty cool to show people that you know they've never been here before yeah i think sure so it could be useful i wonder you know what our real yeah. estate community thinks of that um if they would use something like that so um but anyway this was i think uh 
They're trying to use it in California, of course. Oh, of course. Know, seaside views and all that stuff um, is probably where this is. Well, I would think it would work better out, in the, out west anyway where things are more spread out. Yeah. 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 Well, we're kind of spread out here. Just yeah, here where, we are. Yeah, where you're going. So, um, okay, what else we got? Um, well, let's talk about some other things that, uh, speaking of California, um, and, you know, cost of living, you know, and we talk about inflation, you know, it's not really going up or anything. It depends upon how you count inflation. Yeah. You know, gas prices are going down now. Um, yeah, they're talking dropping. about for the fall season uh, yeah. going in some areas, it might actually get close to $2 a gallon. Yeah. So it, maybe, you know, this stuff uh, factors into, you know, being able to afford your rent, being able to afford your house payment, think about saving money to buy a house. Uh, you know, in California, they got a drought going on in the West. Uh, California is particularly a hard hit. And, you know, I don't know if we understand what we rely on for California for agriculture purposes. Sure. You know, really fruits and vegetables are grown a lot out there. And this, that, that drought is really going to affect yeah. uh, the cost of things like rice, alfalfa, tomatoes, spinach, broccoli, et cetera. So yeah, we're Governor paying, Moonbeam will set it right. We're going to be paying more for that kind of stuff because, well, they're got to yeah. They're going to have to tap their taxpayers out there to pay to try and fix their water yeah. systems. So yeah. it'll be interesting. Okay, folks, we'll be back on Mortgage Talk 101. Uh, we're going out on Asia. Asia, uh, Steely Dan. Steely Dan. Currently, it's 55. You're never more than a few minutes from a weather update here on Super Talk 1270. All right, folks. Bismarck Man, and we're back on Mortgage Talk going on. Dave Floor filling in for Joe at the stainless steel microphone. Mm. Jim Walsh controlling everything in the studio. Drink your big black cow. Yeah. And get out of here. All right. <laughs> well, Jim, let's see. Let's talk about uh, a lot of talk out in the mortgage finance world and housing world about uh, renters versus um, owning a home. Well, especially around here, it's so difficult to yeah. find a place to live. Yeah, and you know, it's not, it's not, it's actually becoming a problem nationwide. Yeah, uh, rent rent costs are going up, and you would think, you know, it, it, well, if rent costs are going up, that would make it a good time to buy a house. Um, but because of you know what we've talked about on the show here before with uh, student debt, um, right, and you know jobs that you know people are. You know, maybe went through college but aren't able to get a job that pays them really well uh, enough to save money to buy a house and afford a house. So they're living with mom and dad, or they're yeah, they're getting they're out of school joining. and they got a college degree and and they yeah. can't find any work to go with it. Yeah, they or they're joining debt. together. Yeah. Rent, you know, roommates uh, situation basically still living in college. You got yeah. roommates uh, to afford things, and you know, it, it, a lot of people are very concerned about this. Sure, because uh, you you is the demand for rentals goes up, I mean, the prices are going to go up. Yeah. Okay. So, well, what, what happens then? Well, you can't afford to save money to afford a, to down payment on a house. I mean, right around here, it's a mess right now. And right in yeah. North Dakota, uh, you know, we certainly have seen that for quite a while now. The demand for rentals uh, is, is growing and then demand for single family housing is growing also, yeah. which has raised the prices. Uh, but this comes from um, actually a, a uh, blogger, he calls himself Dr. Housing Bubble, but he's uh, looks at basically the California market. But this has um, some I- interesting uh, information on it. Uh, this article he talked about, it, we're turning in- the nation into permanent renters. Stagnant household incomes and growing renter class strikes at core of home ownership. And what he's got some charts in his article here, but it, the ones that stand out to me here is the shrinking middle class. Uh, which you would consider would be the people who you know have gotten out of college, got a job, right, and they're starting to earn pretty good money, and they're the middle class, right? Yeah, the millennials just getting out of college. Yeah, okay, and that was us at one point, right? You know, we were in that age group. Oh, well, we were the boomers. You but know, they're yeah. talking about the shrinking middle class. This is the share of households in the middle tier of earners? Mm. Okay, caught in the middle. Okay, um, and back in 1970, uh, about 50. Seven percent of the nation was considered middle class, right? Okay, and you know a lot of people were able to afford homes and, and et cetera. Okay, since whole 19, different era since nineteen seventy uh, through two thousand eleven. Here that has shrunk by over ten percent. Yeah, 
Now the middle class is about 45% of, of the household shares. Well, it used to be you could get a decent place to live, to rent, for yeah. $200 a month. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I mean, I th- I'm old I, enough to remember that. I think I remember paying yeah. that about that much, 300 maybe somewhere in that uh, neighborhood. And 300 was pretty up there, you know. Yeah, 300 yeah. was upscale. I mean, was, I, had, I mean, I remember. Uh, I had a good place, first I, place I rented. Yeah, I had a friend who lived in San Francisco in 1979. They were paying top dollar rent there, it was 500 a month. Oh, and now it's like, That was considered outrageous for the time. And now we're probably above 2,000 out in San Francisco. Probably, yeah. 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 Um, now, th- and then this this part uh, I found kind of interesting. Now, since the crisis hit, when we were talking 2008 uh, financial issues, uh, the nation has added 7 million renter households. Yeah. Okay, and he says, it's not a coincidence that we have witnessed since that time also 7 million foreclosures. Mm. So he basically turned those 7 million foreclosures into rental households, okay, yeah. which has pushed the demand up for that. Uh, and then at that, since then, the home ownership rate uh, has gone, he says stagnant, but actually it's gone down yeah. uh, from like peak of 69. We're down to like 65, I believe. So it's dropped just about five percentage points. Yeah. Um, you know, and, you know, a lot of people, uh, um, you know, owning a home is really a lot of, it's a way to build equity in yourself. I mean, sure. If you're, if you pay off your if you buy a home and you're paying off your mortgage, you're creating equity for yourself that someday you can tap into yeah. when you need to move out from that home. Presumably, yeah. Um, and move to a nursing home. You could sell your house mm-hmm. and you'd have a big chunk of cash there available for you. Theoretically, okay. yeah. Yeah, theoretically. Um, so the the theory behind it was that you know homes would not be a – uh, cash machine, an ATM, where okay, it's always going to increase in value and everything, and that's yeah. kind of where it got to. Um, well, that's kind of what Joe said. He said a house, first and foremost, a house is a place to live. Yeah, and yeah. you have to decide, you know, what's important for you—an apartment or versus owning yeah. a house, because there's different things. There, there's benefits both ways. And there are, I was going to say there are arguments to be made for a lot of people to rent. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this guy goes on to talk about some of that. He he says, you know. Um, People are, are finding out that, you know, after World War II, we had we had factories in this country. Yeah. Uh, we had cars and steel and everything. And people worked for the same company for, you, you know, yeah. forever. You know, like I, I had an uncle that worked for Ford in Detroit. Well, he, he got out of the Army, and that's where he went to work, and he worked there until, you know, 40 years later. I had an uncle worked for the retired. DuPont company in Delaware. He yeah. got out of school. He graduated college, went right into a DuPont. He, yep. he worked there until he was 80 years yeah. old. Now, today, because of the changing nature of the employment yeah. situation in the country, people don't necessarily work for the same company for, for that period of time. Yeah. So they, you know, really, you kind of get where, eh, I'd, I'd rather be mobile. Mm-hmm. Uh, and renting maybe makes sense for a lot of people. Uh, it's certainly at a younger yeah. age. Uh, than before. Um, so that, you know, there's a lot of factors that are pushing things both ways. Um, and, you know, we've done a lot to encourage home ownership in the country. You know, you get special tax treatments, you get mortgage interest reduction, you get down payment assistance programs, which certainly at my agency, yeah. North Dakota Housing, we provide that. So there's a lot of things out there that that promote home ownership. Um, but you know, people now are the younger people are kind of looking at this, say, oh, "That's maybe not something I really need." Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you know, you have to if you are going to own a home, you need really need to think about: Is this the right thing for me to do? Is this yeah. what I want? And I shouldn't expect that it's going to become this great cash cow for me. It's yeah. it's a place to live that I can call my own. I have my own yard. It's a place my kids will call home, et cetera. And yeah, whatnot. you know, so you have to think about that. Um, but. This you know nation of renters, as he he calls it, yeah. By our policies and the way the job situation is in the country and everything, and the student debt, you add it all up, and it's really pushing people into renting, whether they want to or not, because they don't have a choice. Yeah, so I mean, saying, certainly around here, that's the case. Concept, yeah. When they can rent or when they have to buy, I mean, it's very yeah. confusing. Yeah, today well, but we kind of have the opposite problem here, don't here, we? Here, I mean, it's it's both. I you know, it's hard to afford to rent. Yeah, it's hard to rent. But and there is not a lot of houses for sale across the state, mm. so they're expensive also. Oh, so yeah. you, you got both. Tell me about uh, it. No, you know, uh, 
you know, I think you were talking about the rent in your place is going to be going up. Um, yeah. And well, it just did. It just did. And, and it'll I'm go sure up again another 50 next year that. is what they're saying. You know, and we've heard the stories yeah. up in Williston with the mobile home park that increased $500 a month for a lot rent. And, and we have pets. That makes it even harder to find hard a place too. to live. Yeah. Very hard. Yeah. So, uh, you know, but there's you're, you're kind of here, you're kind of stuck one way or the other. Yeah. Okay, I, it costs as much to rent. It'd be great to buy, but that's going to cost me just as much or more. So mm-hmm. it's tough to say. Um, you know, and and a lot of this has to do with you know policy that's coming down from the feds, and a lot of people are say we're we're uh, protecting buyers right out of home ownership by all the regulations in the mortgage industry yeah. now and stuff. So it's you know which I think is part of the problem. I think we're we're not letting the market. Uh, come up with solutions to these issues. Um, well, you know, everybody agrees that the market is the best way to do it in the long run, but in the short yeah. run, everybody wants help with their own situation. Yeah, yeah. That's kind it, of what we're dealing with. Yeah, and I, I think it, I, I, I think, you know, we, we're trying to protect, there's a big push to protect consumers, especially yeah. in the mortgage place because of what happened, you know, in the last decade. Right. And I don't know if that's really the right thing. I think you know, you have to let the creative people come up with solutions to the problems. Yeah, and and people have to take a responsibility too. If owning a home is not the right thing for me to do, I shouldn't do it. All right. You know, if that's not what I want, I you know I shouldn't do it. Or if it doesn't make sense for me because I might have to move in three years, then probably I shouldn't do it. So we're trying to protect the consumer too much, and that's kind of throttling back the availability of credit in the mortgage yeah. place. And, you know, but then you have the policy people that say, well, we need more lending, but the lenders are kind of pushing back saying, well, that's fine, but you've got all this regulation in place on us. So, you know, yeah. it, that, that's, that's two heads that are butting each other. And round and the round we working. go. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so it, it's interesting stuff. Uh, if you're, if you're mortgage geeks, like Joe and I are, um, not everybody is that, but. Um, so anyway, we had a, a little interesting day. Drone, I thought the drone thing was kind of fun. Yeah, yeah shooting was, down the drone. I, I think cool. it's a great idea for real estate. It'd be interesting to see if anybody else thinks that, but I think it'd be yeah. pretty cool. So anyway, uh, I think Joel will be back next week on Mortgage Talk. And uh, where are we going out on? Time Out of Time Mind. Time Out of Mind. What album was that from? Gaucho. Gaucho. Okay. 81. All right, cool. All right. All right, folks. Have a great day. And Jim, we'll see you next week. Yeah. All right.